Hi all, this is Jan Almighty and welcome to this video. So today we are going to mix it up a bit. Actually inspired by a comment made by a subscriber, I decided to make another type of video. So not just analysis and uh, end game videos. Uh, let's uh, go over actually the top blunders made by grandmasters. Wouldn't that be fun? So uh, in order to try out uh, this type of video, I chose one of the recent tournaments and it was the Grand Chess Classic. So let me show you, in my opinion, what are, what are the top blunders of that tournament. In number so, five, we have a, a, a blunder from the game Fabiano Carano versus Ho Yifan. As we can see, Ho Yifan has four pawns and a knight in an endgame against a bishop and three pawns and also an ugly looking pawns. But uh, one thing that is going for Caruana here is that he has his king very close to the pawns, uh, defending them, and if he can just move the bishop around, it is essentially Yifan that needs to make something out of it to go for a winning endgame. She plays king to d e3 here with the right idea, being the, bring the king closer, and now Caruana makes a horrible mistake. He plays bishop to b7. And the reason is, this is in number 5, so this is one of the the worst blunders that was actually made on this list but essentially it is really difficult to see what uh, what black needs to play in order to uh, win the game so the winning move is actually king to d2 and after this yeah the idea is if bishop captures on a6 you have this knight to d3 check uh, and you don't just give up a knight after this capture you have d4 so a combination of these three moves is uh, quite difficult to see so this is actually the main reason why is this number five uh, if, if you capture the pawn c3 is a threat and then c2 c1 and the same idea goes if you capture on c4 once again this pawn captures and this is pretty much unstoppable if you don't go about uh, capturing this knight if you move the king a knight can come on e1 and now the threat is to capture this pawn or this pawn and uh, this isn't something that uh, black can yeah take care of uh, white can take or he cannot take care of all of these threats if he captures on b5 king to c3 and now after capturing on c2 d4 d3 d2 will be the main threat so essentially losing end game uh, just wanted to show you what happened in the game after bishop to b7 even played a5 and missed her one and only chance to win the game I guess uh, Magnus wouldn't let this one slide, so Fabi, please take care of your endgame until November. In number 4, we once again have Ho Yifan in the game, and here she plays with white pieces against Maxime Vacher Lagrav, and he plays it very smart. So he plays bishop to a6, but the main idea, uh, he wants to eye the c4 square, so that if the knight can jump here, that he gets captured and the black can uh, pick up his pawn back. And this is probably the main reason why Yifan uh, played uh, bishop to f1 here, which is a terrible blunder, because here after this, uh, there is uh, a nice, nice series of moves, which Lagrov makes in the game, which uh, bring uh, br brought him uh, essentially a win. After bishop captures on f1, king captures on f1, and this is all forced. Queen to a8, the knight is attacked, he cannot be defended, so he has to move. The only square is knight to c4. Queen captures on e4. Now the threat is... Um, Queen to h1 checkmate, so king to g1. Uh, we see knight to e2, king to f1, and knight to d4. So this nice maneuver, which doesn't allow king to g1 once again because of knight to f3 fork. So here you have to give up one other pawn, which is with f3, queen to f3, queen to f2, and uh, uh, king, queen h1, uh, queen g1, and uh, queen e4. Once again, the queen is in the center of the board, the knight is defended. Queen, is, Queen and Knight are very good, uh, centralized very good, and essentially what will happen, Queen to b1 is a threat uh, picking up these pawns, and Black will easily win this game. Uh, Lagrave uh, continue to play this uh, game uh, for, uh, of course, Yifan and Lagrave continue to play this game for 5-6 more moves, uh, and in the end, uh, Yifan resigned the game. So instead of uh, playing Bishop to f1, she should have just continued with uh, Bishop to f3, uh, and uh, probably king to g2, or just go about uh, drawing a different, uh, having a different idea for drawing the game. After something like h5, you have this, uh, you have to play knight to c4, in, essentially to bring your uh, knight back from the edge of the board, and after pawn ca bishop captures, pawn captures, and queen captures, you can go queen here check, king to g7, and queen to e7. And now the next move will be e5, and having a perpetual chances, uh, perpetual check chances, this is just a drawing game, and okay, Yifan missed it, and she played bishop to f1. 
in number three. We have a position from the game between Arkady Nidic and Matthias Blubaum, and in this position here, uh, Nidic continued with queen to b2 to have a battery on this diagonal, and uh, Blubaum uh, spotted a nice little tactic that he thought uh, should win him a pawn, and it did for a moment because for a moment because we see bishop to d3, bishop to d3, and rook captures on f3. So he did want a pawn, but uh, this gave white quite a good attack. Then for queen to e2, rook to f8, and queen to h5, those are the best moves and the moves that were played in the game. Now the threats of queen to g6 uh, and the queen uh, and queen uh, on the h file, rook on the g file, these two bishops. Uh, and a very good centralized knight is quite enormous. White has a very strong attack here. So what was played in the game was knight to e7, the best move. And here white should have continued with f4, opening up this diagonal and just continuing with the attack. But okay, knight went uh, went on uh, instead of that to play a rook to g7. And in the end, yeah, essentially uh, he went into some troubles and uh, had an end game where he had two bishops against a knight and a rook uh, with more pawns. And in the end, it was a draw. Uh, but uh, as I said, after knight to e7, f4, he can even capture on d5. But still, the threat of capturing on uh, uh, e5, if he, if uh, black captures here, queen to h6, and after that, capture on g7. This is just unstoppable. You have to play something like rook to f6. But after pawn captures, he will lose a piece, and yeah, this is just a losing for black. Number two, we have a game between Gary Romayer and, um, and Fabiano Caruana. Um, so here, uh, Caruana played b5, wanted to kind of stabilize his rook on c4. Maybe if uh, white captures, bishop can capture on c4. But that was actually the best course of action here for Gary Romayer. Uh, in the end, okay, there is some kind of an attack going on, but uh, it isn't all that clear how... Uh, black and continue. So this was the best course of action. But here Georg Meyer decided, okay, I'm fine here and I can go on a bit of a shopping spree on the A file with my queen. So he plays first queen to A5. Um, okay, and Caruana just uh, shredded his shoulders and played knight to H2, continue with the attack. And Meyer still thinks that he uh, isn't actually losing this game, so he continues with queen to A6. Uh, and after this, Caron just captured on f3, pawn captures on f3, played g4, and went on to win the game. So attack on the h file, and also the threat of capturing on c4 was too much. The best move actually was here to play queen to h2, and after king to f1, play something like rook to d8, threatening to capture on d4 and have too much threats in the center and on the side of the board. But okay, in a sense, uh, it is difficult to see all, all these moves. So... Karana decided to play on with g4 here, uh, but still he did win the game. And in first place, uh, once again we have Georg Meyer on the spotlight. Unfortunately for him, he makes the blunder once again. In this game, he is playing against Arkady Nidic, and Nidic in this position continues with knight captures on f3, so weakening the defense of the white's king. And uh, uh, Meyer should have paid attention, at least in this game, uh, on his defenses, as we've seen in the Blunder number two against Fabiano Caruana. He was kind of greedy and went for the pawns. And he does it again. So here he captures on b6. And uh, in this position, uh, Knight just played queen to b7. And Meyer resigned the game. The main reason behind it is that uh, the queen is on this diagonal where the king is. And there are some nasty jump jumping points for the knight, uh, which give a discovered attack. And you cannot do much about it. So uh, what you can do, you can move the king, for example, on the h file, h3 or h1, but rook to h6 brings a very quick checkmate if you don't do something about it. So I will just quickly show it. Uh, queen to h1, queen g1, queen captures, and this is checkmate. So essentially what you have to do, you have to give up a queen for the rook here. Or if you don't want to go on the h file, you can go on the f file, f1 or um, f2, but this gives uh, knight to d4, king to g1, and knight to c2 captures forking the queen and the rook and just having a losing game. So uh, this was uh, this was something that uh, that should should have happened if uh, Meyer continued the game. Here, instead of uh, capturing the pawn, he could have continued knight to b4, having a centralized knight after knight to d5, blocking the queen on this diagonal. Uh, and uh, yeah, at this position, he actually has uh, quite uh, quite good chances to even win the game. 
uh, but at least he has a draw. So yeah, should have continued this way, but unfortunately this is, uh, in my opinion, the worst blunder of the Grink Chess Classic. And for the end I actually prepared you a uh, kind of an honorable mention because uh, this isn't technically a blunder, it leads to a worse position quite quicker, uh, but I wanted to show you nevertheless in this video. So here uh, Nikita Vitugo in the round 1 against Matthias Blubaum played knight to e4 with a very good idea after bishop captures on e4, which is the best continuation. Rook to c7 and when the queen moves somewhere, uh, queen to f6 is an unstoppable threat, check and pick up the rook. So that w this was the idea, but uh, Bluebaum decided to play king to g1, which gave uh, Nikita a very nice idea of rook to a3, after which move uh, Bluebaum resigned the game, because uh, a very beautiful idea of attacking the queen and all of the squares on this diagonal where the queen can go to are actually defended by the black pieces. So after a queen captures on a3, you can go queen to d4, and there, if you go f1, this is checkmate, and if you go h1, there is this very nice idea of the smothered checkmate, which I'm going to quickly show for the end of this blunder video. So yeah, this is pretty much it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. It is a type of a new one for me, so definitely I'm going to work out some details in the future. If you like it, definitely mention it in the comments down below. If you have some other tournament that you would like me to cover, uh, I would definitely, if I get a positive feedback on this, I would definitely cover uh, the US Championship and the Shamkir Chess Tournament, the top blunders from those tournaments. And also, if you don't didn't like my list, if you thought there are some other blunders that uh, should have been mentioned in this list, please definitely post the comments in the section down below. That being said, I would like to thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time.